Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with a parameter. So a is a given number and we're looking for real values of x. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at is since we have a radical and the square root of something always needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So if a is less than zero, then we have no solution. Of course, I'm talking about real solutions here. So I'm not concerned with complex solutions. Okay, what happens if a is equal to zero? And you can find that actually, if you replace a with zero, we're gonna get, we're gonna get something like the two times the absolute value of x minus x squared is gonna equal zero. And then from here, we can actually write this as two times the absolute value of x minus the absolute value of x squared because they're basically the same thing since x cannot be negative in this case. Right? I mean, x squared cannot be negative. So we can just pull out the absolute value of x, factor this as 2 minus the square root, I mean, the absolute value of x is equal to 0. And from here, we get basically three solutions because you can set it equal to 0. That's going to give you x equals 0. And by setting this equal to 0, you get absolute value of x is equal to 2, which means x is equal to 2 or negative 2. So we're basically getting three solutions if x uh, if a is equal to zero for a less than zero we do not get any real solutions okay cool let's continue and obviously the other case that we need to look at is when a is greater than zero so if a is greater than zero what happens obviously we're going to have a valid equation because the radical will be positive the result so what I can do is I can basically square both sides. But one of the things that I need to look at is whatever is inside the radical obviously needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So I can safely say that, okay, two times the absolute value of x minus x squared needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And also by squaring both sides, I'm getting this expression is equal to a squared. Now at this point you may say, well, a squared is always greater than or equal to zero, but we also have to check both to get the solutions. Okay, now, how, how am I gonna write this as a solution or as an equation actually rather? So if you look at the second one, we can write it as a quadratic. Let's put everything on the right hand side and write the x squared as the absolute value of x squared because they're equal. Minus two times the absolute value of x plus a squared is equal to zero. That's my quadratic, obviously. If you set uh, the absolute value of x is equal to u, you're just gonna get the following, the absolute value of x is gonna equal from the discriminant, you know, the quadratic formula, negative b, which is gonna be two, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is four, minus four ac, and four ac in this case is gonna be four a squared. And then all over two times a, which is two. Obviously this can be simplified because you can divide everything by two, plot the four, so on and so forth, and you're gonna be getting something like this, okay? 1 plus minus the square root of 1 minus x squared is equal to the absolute value of x. Okay, obviously this gives us four solutions because the absolute value of x can equal two different things with the, because of the plus minus sign. Let's go ahead and consider all these solutions. But one of the things that we need to be careful about is in order for this equation to have real solutions, the stuff inside the radical needs to be non-negative, right? So that means that one minus a squared needs to be greater or equal to zero, which implies that a squared is, you know, less than or equal to one. But this implies that a must be between negative one and one, but we already assumed that a is positive here, right? That was our assumption. So we're only gonna consider the values that are between zero and one. And I'd like to act actually exclude those case where a is equal to one. So let's just go ahead and consider these values where a is strictly between zero and one. Now in this case, we're getting four solutions and those solutions are gonna come from here. So absolute value of x can equal one plus the square root of one minus a squared. And this gives me two solutions where x is equal to the expression itself or x is equal to the opposite of the expression because of the absolute value, right? And in the other scenario, we have the absolute value of x is equal to one minus the square root of one minus a squared. And this also gives us two solutions. X is equal to one minus the square root of one minus a squared, or x is the opposite of this expression, which can be written like this. Okay, so we got four solutions for a between zero and one. Notice that I excluded the one because if a is equal to one, 
you're basically going to be getting numerical values from here, which you can include if you want. I mean, in this case, you can safely say that, okay, fine, you know, A is equal to 1. But I'd like to look at them separately because they're going to give us numerical values. Again, you can include them here if you want. Okay, so that's going to be my next case. If A is equal to 1, then I'm basically getting X equals 1 or X equals negative 1, which follows from the four solutions above. Now, what happens if A is greater than 1, right? That's the only thing we haven't looked at because we said that A is positive and A is between 0 and 1 and A is 1. Now, A is greater than 1. Well, if A is greater than 1, obviously, the expression inside the radical is going to be undefined, right? It's going to be negative, so its square root is going to be undefined. Therefore, we say no real solutions for that as well. Okay, so we're pretty much done. This brings us to the end of this video, but I'd like to summarize all the results so we can basically take a look at the big picture altogether. Okay, so here's my solution set. If A is less than 0 or greater than 1, then we have no real solutions. Okay, so that's my one of the cases basically. If A is equal to 0, then we got three solutions. Remember, x is equal to 0, 2, or negative 2. If a is equal to 1, we got two solutions, right? Then we can say that x is equal to 1 or negative 1. And finally, if a is between, strictly between a, uh, 1 and 0, or 0 and 1, then we get our solutions only in terms of a, and that can be written as plus minus 1, plus minus the square root of 1 minus a squared. And those are going to be all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And be safe. And take care. Until tomorrow. See you.